Welcome to Shattering Myths, the program devoted to the fastest growing segment of the world society. To those who know that every religious, political, economic, and military institution is corrupt, that they have all become counterproductive, I am Yana. Our number, if you'd like to join us anytime over the next two hours, 877-300-7645. In the news, I heard uh, the SRN commentator talk about how the Republicans are going to be really busy now that they're back from their vacation. And that one of the things that will be high on their agenda will be to renew the Patriot Act. I wonder if, if there has ever been legislation in America uh, more opposed to the rights and the freedoms of the citizens of this country than that one. Even the name. Yanawa tells us that if you, and that happens to be God's one and only name for those who may be new to this program, I am new to what God actually says. Yeah, his name is Yahweh. He uh, tells us as uh, he approaches Abraham that a prerequisite for engaging in him, from, for a prerequisite for engaging in a relationship with him, a prerequisite for getting to know him, a prerequisite for spending a time with him in the promised land, which is a direct metaphor for heaven, a prerequisite for salvation. Prerequisite means if you don't do this, none of the rest of those things can occur. And the prerequisite is walk away from your country. Now, his country happened to be Babylon. Babylon is, uh, is the Hebrew for confusion from the Hebrew word Babel. And Yahweh goes to great lengths to describe what it is about Babylon that he doesn't like. And it's primarily their religion, their politics, their economics, and their militarism. If you were to look at Babylon today through the lens of America, you would be find it difficult to distinguish between the two. Babylon was the superpower, the most aggressive military of its time. So is America today. Babylon was an overtly religious place. So is America today. As a matter of fact, America's leading religion, Christianity, as an offshoot of Roman Catholicism, is based almost exclusively on the Babylonian religion. Christianity has more in common with the Babylonian religion than it has with the Torah, which is Yahweh's blueprint for relationship and salvation. If you move to economics, Babylon was built on their one-sided relationships with trading partners. And because it was on the two mightiest rivers, it was an agricultural producer, and it used its ability to produce food and to trade and to manufacture goods to enrich itself. It was the richest nation on earth by far. So is America. When you look at Babylon, which went to great lengths to codify its um, politics, to impose its politics, its, its political and social rule, the first codified set of laws came out of Babylon. The first public school system, Babylon. The first institutional religious uh, dogmas and means of, uh, of controlling people, Babylon. It's, it is the wellspring from which American society has evolved. And the first thing that Yahweh says is, walk away from your country. Now, if you want to engage in the covenant with him, and there's only one of them, the covenant has not yet been renewed. And when it is renewed, it, the renewal will base, be based on a wholesale and complete integration of the Torah, which means the renewal of the covenant, when it occurs, will be the antithesis of Christianity. So, 
if you want to participate in the covenant, which is the only way to form a relationship with God, it is the lone means to be part of his family. And being part of his family is the lone means to salvation. The prerequisite is to walk away from your country, to be unpatriotic. So the Patriot Act is like putting a finger in God's eye and say, we hate you. We despise what you stand for. We don't trust you. We don't like you. We don't want any part of you. We are here announcing that we're going to go our own way. That we're going to rely on our own military, on our own spine, on our own economy, on our own religion. We're going our way. You can go yours. We don't want to be involved in a relationship with you. We don't want anything to do with you. Go away. That's what the Patriot Act says. That's how God sees it. And this is not debatable. This is not my opinion. This is not up for your evaluation. Yala was extraordinarily concise when he presented the covenant to Abraham. The first statement is walk away from your country. And two, the land that I am offering as an inheritance. If you're not willing to walk away from your country, if you're a proponent of the Patriot Act, you are never going to enter heaven. Now, to be careful here, if you are a proponent of this, and that is something that like the Republican congressmen and senators that wants to renew it, and like the, the Republican president who enacted it, if you are a proponent of it, then I can assure you, you'll never know God. You'll never be saved. You'll never engage in a relationship with him. If you are just acquiescing to it, but somewhere deep down there is the motivation to shed your ignorance and to stop being irrational and to actually know why the Patriot Act is counterproductive against your interests, and why Yahweh's plan is the antithesis of it and is in your interest. If you are motivated to know what he said and motivated to understand why he wants you to be unpatriotic, then there is still hope for you. But it's just hope until such time as you act upon those things. Beyond Yahweh's insistence, and this is a non-negotiable condition of participating in the covenant, and it needs to be, that you walk away from your country, and that that country in particular is the influence of Babylon, which was religion, politics, militarism, and economic schemes, uh, as he describes them in great detail in the book, two Gentiles called uh, Yermayah, Yahweh of the Lips, known as Jeremiah. If God's testimony is not sufficient for you, if you're not willing to say, well, you know, he did create the universe, he is offering me the opportunity to, to be part of his family and to live forever with him, uh, that's good enough for me. Uh, I'm just going to accept what he is uh, offering uh, and not question it. Uh, that's fine. But if you want to know why God wants you to walk away from religion and politics, is because he doesn't want eternity to be a continuation of the hell we have imposed upon ourselves. Religion, politics, militarism, and jaundiced economic schemes are responsible for the vast preponderance of the pain, of the deception, of the false hope, of the enslavement, of the manipulation of people, of their indoctrination, for a better part now of 6,000 years. If God were to allow religious and political patriotic individuals into heaven, then it would be no different than what we're experiencing now. I don't want an eternity of this. God doesn't want it either. So the only way that he can preclude the deception and the death and the destruction and the damnation that's associated with religion and politics and economic schemes and overt militarism like we witness in Babylon, like we witness today from America, 
is to preclude those who are patriotic, those who are religious, from engaging in a relationship with God and therefore being saved by him. Well, that's the reason for it. Now, if you want to understand the consequence of the Patriot Act, what it did is it created a Gestapo for America. It created a homeland security apparatus that was the equivalent of the mission of the U.S. military. You see, the U.S. military, by as a department of defense, and of the, the institution that is acclaimed by patriots as being responsible for American freedom, now none of which is true, it isn't a defensive institution at all. It's an aggressive institution. It's imposing itself on the rest of the world. It's not defending America. But that is the way that it's presented. So the way that America justifies having the largest military in the world is to say that it is providing for American liberty and defending America from invasion, from harm. And yet, what is the mantra of the Patriot Act? Doesn't it then create a parallel national institution to do exactly the same thing? to spy, to use all manner of, uh, of federal agents armed to the hilt to protect Americans from harm. Same thing. In fact, they're engaged in exactly the same foe, although neither will actually use that foe's name. The foe, of course, is Islam and Islamic terrorism. But what we've created is a shadow military. This one overshadowing America. And as a result, it was the greatest loss of freedom in American history with a single act. If you're a patriot, go to hell. You're headed there anyway. I found it interesting, not that uh, Jokar Shanarev was uh, convicted on all counts. And his, his only um, uh, defense was, yeah, I did it, but uh, uh, my brother uh, talked me into it. <laughs> yeah, I did it, but my brother talked me into it. Yeah, I, I maimed 200 people. And I killed, uh, uh, where was it, two or three. And um, I did it uh, in the name of, uh, of Islam. And while uh, being shot in the little tub of a boat, I wrote in uh, that my brother was a martyr and is already uh, enjoying the virgins and Allah's paradise. And uh, I will be there soon to join him. Yeah, you confessed to the crime in court admitted yes you admitted while you were being hunted that you did it and you admitted in the court that you did it uh, so you know a conviction big whoop I mean it's uh, when you confess to the crime and your only excuse is my brother talked me into it and you're an adult yeah we wasted our time with the trial. But what I did find interesting was uh, Mommy uh, Shinara's comment. Now, she, of course, is, uh, is uh, ugly. Now, that's not her fault. But she exacerbates her ugliness by wearing a burqa. Now, she only wears the headscarf and is covered from head to toe, toe in a tent below the, uh, the neck with the, the headscarf. So you can actually see her face, which is why I say that She's ugly, exacerbated, of course, by her religious apparel. She uh, says that, no, her sons are innocent, that they didn't plant the, the two bombs that they're photographed planting that killed three people and wounded 300, mutilating 200 of them. 
No, she says the United States will ultimately pay for freeing them. Oh, Jesus. Ah, here's your sons admitted to it. Um, have all of the evidence of building the bomb, the evidence of photography, evidence of planting the bomb. And you're, you're saying that America framed them. Well, I'm going to tell you, America does frame lots of people. America is guilty of framing people. Uh, you know, there's a, a man who has been uh, on death row for better part of 30 years that was released uh, two weeks ago. He was framed. The Department of Justice and the FBI framed him. They, uh, they lied about the ballistics. They presented false evidence to a jury, and a jury based solely on ballistics evidence that was wholly and completely fabricated convicted a man to die. You know, shame on the uh, on the jury, shame on uh, the FBI, shame on the judicial system that literally framed an innocent man. So America does frame. In fact, all of the sting operations where America says that, you know, we stopped the terrorist plot. Yeah. In almost every case, America instigate, instigates the plot and then uh, arrests the person when they follow through with what the FBI had instigated. It's reprehensible that we do that kind of thing. So, yes, does America frame? Damn right. Where they was a joker and uh, Tamerlane framed? Hell no. Mommy, if you want to look for a scapegoat, if you want to find the cause of your son's being reprehensible, being despicable, being mutilators and murderers. Look in a mirror. You made them that way. You and your goddamn religion. You are wholly and completely responsible. You ought to have been tried right along with them and your religion as well. She said, my sons are innocent, as innocent as all those who are being killed by America. Wow. You see, that's part of a problem of bombing a religion, of using your military to go after a religion, which is what America did in Afghanistan. It's what America did in Iraq. It is what America has done in Somalia. It is what America did in uh, Libya. We didn't use words. We used bullets and bombs. And we claimed that, that just as it was the case in Yemen, that when we fired our drones, missiles, and when we shot our rifles, and when we dropped bombs from planes, that we were um, fighting um, insurgents, that we were fighting terrorists, but the fact is that 100%, 100% of those that America has killed overseas were civilians. 100%. We haven't killed anybody that was part of an army. We killed civilians. We killed the most religious element of the society. We killed people because they were being religious. That's what we did. There's no dispute about that a statement of fact. Now, does that make the people we killed innocent? No. Welcome back to Saturday Yes, she, uh, she whined, my, son are, is, my sons are innocent, as innocent as all those being killed by your country. Uh, Zubikat Shinarev wrote, uh, today they are killing Muslims and tomorrow will come uh, your turn and he who doubts this uh, deep, is deeply mistaken. Uh, the, the fact that that uh, America killed her eldest son is indisputable. Um, his her oldest son, though, was had just perpetrated a heinous crime, wounded three hundred, mutilated two hundred of those, killed three. He had just perpetrated a heinous crime, and he was uh, um, avoiding arrest by shooting at the cops. Now, 
I am wholly opposed to cops having the power to tell anyone that they must um, put their hands up, that they must lay on the ground, that they uh, have to respond to their orders as if their orders were law. I, am, I think it's reprehensible that we've empowered police in a country that pretends to be free with that power. And I am always against a police killing uh, unless the individual is actively engaged shooting their gun. They not only have a gun, but they're shooting their gun. Go ahead and kill them. Shinarif was in that case. So, don't have a problem that he said. And uh, in that case, the, he's dead because he not only committed a crime, but he chose to die uh, trying to kill others. But you need to understand, folks, that 100% of those America has killed and our invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq have left somewhere between 350,000 and a million people dead. And if you look, if you combine that with our bombing of Libya and our involvement in arming both sides in Syria, and our drone missions over Yemen and the civil war that has ensued, then the death toll of America's malfeasance in the Islamic world is absolutely and unequivocally over a million. Now, those million people, many of them were killed as a result of the civil war that we not only enabled but made inevitable a civil war where we provided the weapons. Now, you may say, well, it was Muslims killing Muslims and Muslims killing Christians. It's not America that pulled the trigger, and America, therefore, is not responsible for the, the terrorist bombings of fellow Muslims. Oh, but yes, we are. And the reason that we are is the same reason that in the, the justice system in America, if you supplied the gun and you created the conditions that that gun was fired. And it was fired largely in your presence, using your weapons, because you created the, the source of anarchy. You're guilty of murdering every bit as much as the person who let the suicide bomb. Kirk, what do you think? Uh, how many of those deaths do you think America's collective soul is stained with of the million people who have died because of our recent uh, adventures in the Islamic well, world. Well, I think you're being conservative when you say a million, because if you allow people knowingly to, if you knew somebody's going to slaughter a bunch of people and then you aid them. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you give them the weapons. Give them the weapons and continue to support them right. and encourage them, then how could you do anything else but be uh, an accomplice to murder? Right. You know, the, the Shias in Iran uh, view America as the second most reprehensible country on earth. They always speak of America as our enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, when they play war games, it's always against America. Um, so you'd, you'd wonder, how is that possible when we gave Iraq to Iran, which it was in a sense gave Syria to Iran, which uh, led to Iran taking over Lebanon, because Syria was dependent on Iraq, which we gave to Iran, which made Syria de dependent of Iran. And we gave Iraq, and therefore Iran, one of the largest militaries in the world. All those weapons, all that training, all those uh, munitions, we gave to the Iraqi military, which was wholly Shiite and controlled by Iran. Mm -hmm. So you would think, they ought to love us. Look what they did. America provided the weapons and the, and the situation where Shia Islam, for the first time in its history, was growing more powerful than Sunni Islam. You would think they would love us. But no, they hate us because we are the largest weapons supplier to Saudi Arabia, to Pakistan, to Turkey, to Egypt. 
and we have armed the Sunni Mujahideen that are fighting the Islamic State, that we are arming them. So for that reason, they hate us. And so that's why you don't, you don't engage against a religion with bullets and bombs. There, no matter what side Mommy Shanaref is uh, on, she's going to view America as the enemy. Mm -hmm. Did did we ever? Uh, did anyone ever love us in Russia or the communist uh, countries or the Nazis when we supplied them with stuff leading up to the war? Boy, yeah. Look at the look at the uh, the last two world wars where we were on the side of Russia, and particularly in uh, in World War II, where we provide the Russians with with tanks and we uh, with weapons of all kinds. Yeah. And uh, and what happened after the war? They essentially turned those weapons on us. Yeah. And started to threaten us. What happened in uh, in the in China when we turned on uh, Chiang Kai Shek and started to arm Mao Zedong? Did he thank us, or was his thanks uh, Korea? I it was Korea. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and how did the Soviets thank us? That was Vietnam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how did how did Al Qaeda and the Taliban thank us? for providing $5 billion of weapons to them during the uh, Carter era when we uh, armed them to fight a proxy war against those Soviets. How did the Taliban and Al-Qaeda thank us? Well, they just kept uh, Afghanistan after they took it over from the Russians. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and then started to terrorize uh, Americans. Yeah, it, it, you, if you arm someone because they're the enemy of your enemy, it's going to end up that they're going to turn those weapons against you. I mean, name a situation where it didn't happen that way. I, I don't know. Right. I mean, I'm pretty good on history. There, there are there are not any. No. You arm, you arm someone else who doesn't like you to help you fight somebody else, and then <laughs> if they're strong enough, they take on you. Yep, the best <laughs> enemy money can buy, as they uh, as they say. Sure. Yeah, look what we did to uh, to Nazi Germany, and and then what happened? Oh, yeah. as a I mean, consequence. Throughout the whole war, the way they were, uh, they was they were still happening. Yeah, who was the largest seller of uh, of steel and uh, of uh, and of fuel? Which are the two? Those are that's the mother's milk of a of a military. Steel and uh, and uh, gasoline fuel, well, both diesel and large. gasoline for for airplanes for ships. Uh, who was the largest source of metals and uh, fuel to the Japanese? Uh, well, I, I think we were for a long time. We were. Yeah, who's, the, who's, who's the biggest supplier of anybody, of all those things? We yeah, now, who's the, we are no longer the largest supplier of steel, and we're no longer the world's largest supplier of fuel. Um, we are the world's largest supplier of uh, bullets, bombs, and, uh, and things that destroy and kill. We're the largest exporter of, of death the world has ever known. Mm -hmm. And do you think we're making friends when we do it? No. Uh, you know, along those lines, uh, do, the, do the Emmons teach something different there that they don't teach uh, uh, everywhere else? I mean, do they, do they teach them to, uh, um, gosh, we need to be nice to these people because they've helped us? <laughs> what you're saying is, is uh, does Islam differ? Now, well there, well, there are two sects of Islam, and some would say there's three because there's this uh, Sufi spiritualism, but they represent less than 1% of, of uh, Muslims. It's kind of like calling the Church of Scientology Christian. You know, so let's, let's realize there are two sects of Islam. Okay. Do they uh, have a different Quran? No. No. Do they have a different prophet? No. Do they have a different Sunnah, which is the example of Muhammad? No, the Sunnahs are the Sunnahs. Do they uh, um, have a different set of hadith, since there's only four collections of hadith written within 200 years of his death? Do they have something, a, a different collection other than Muslim and, and Bukhari, Esau, uh, uh, and Tabari? Uh, no, they're all reading from the same script. Same exact uh, 
prophet, same founder, same God, same Quran, same collection of, uh, of Hadith, same um, Sunnah, same Sharia. I mean, it's all the same. The only difference is who's in charge. It's kind of like they ripped between Roman Catholicism and, uh, and Greek Eastern, Orthodox. Yeah, Eastern Greek Orthodox. Orthodox yeah. yeah, Eastern Orthodox. Greek Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox. Uh, it's just it's who's in charge. Struggle. Yeah, it's a power struggle for who's in charge, the religious to say. Well, there was a very little difference when the English church uh, kicked out the uh, Pope and stole all that stuff. Oh, and yeah. Protestant was, Christianity, uh, as it was originally conceived in uh, Great Britain, mm -hmm. uh, over the issue of a power struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, uh, divorce was the uh, the issue, but uh, it's just over who's uh, who is more important. Yeah. Uh, or more impotent, as the case uh, would be, uh, between uh, Britain and uh, the Roman Catholic Church. Um, the Anglican Church, the only difference between Anglican Christianity at the time and Roman Catholicism was who was in charge. Mm -hmm. And if you think that that was the birth of Protestantism, well, you can claim it as such, but that means that Protestantism and Roman Catholicism are exactly the same beast. Yeah, just different people in charge. And you look how close Protestant Christianity is to Roman Catholicism today. I mean, uh, the difference is crosses versus crucifixes, um, and uh, uh, greater veneration of uh, of Mary and a uh, and a Pope. What's the difference beyond that? The terrorist manufacturing facility. The bomb making facility, the actual source from which the bomber emerged, Mami Shenarif, wasn't finished. She uh, had more to say about the connection between her sons, the terrorist, the bomber, the murderer and mutilator of Islam that she herself manufactured. She said, how can a mother feel? Who gives a crap how you feel? You made these monsters. Whose son is in the claws of a predator preparing to tear them to pieces like meat. God damn whore of a woman. Your sons built bombs out of pressure cookers that tore the limbs of 300 people apart as if they were meat. And you want to blame the victims for that murderous and mutilating behavior of your sons? You see, it's only in religion. Only religion that causes people to be that con convoluted. Politics will do it. Patriotism will do it to an extent. But nothing turns the truth upside down, like religion, where the murderer is viewed as the, as the person in the right. The mutilator is viewed as innocent, while those that he mutilated are viewed as guilty. That's what she said. Am I being too harsh here? No, I, I, but don't you don't you feel that that is extraordinarily telling in the attitude? That's not her. That's that's all the all the um, really devout Muslims uh, mm -hmm. idea yeah. about us, and that's yeah. what they would like to do to us. They would like to. Uh, Why don't we correct that just ever so slightly? It's not entirely her. It's this is who she is. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is she's not alone. No. That every good Muslim has been poisoned similarly. Now, how are you going to salvage a country filled with people that uh, lost? If, if people's view is that inverted, I mean, literally upside down, she says that her sons are in the claws of a predator who is preparing to tear them to pieces like meat, when that's exactly what her sons did to innocent people. Mm -hmm. at a uh, marathon race in Boston. When you're dealing with people that delusional, that perverted, that warped, you tell me, what can you do under those situations? How are you going to bring democracy 
How are you going to bring peace? <laughs> How are you going to influence them in some positive way? How are your weapons going to bring a solution yeah. to people that corrupt? And even better, how are you going to sign a tree? <laughs> yeah, like really? Yeah. If, you're, if your worldview is that upside down, why would you even negotiate a treaty with someone like that? Mm -hmm. I've got another one. Why would you send $100 billion worth of weapons to people similarly perverted? To Saudi Arabia and, and Turkey and Pakistan and Iraq. Why would you send people this out of their mind weapons? Why do you, why do you consent? Cons Continue to send eleven billion dollars a year to Egypt and or probably about the same amount to Pakistan. At what point do you? Uh, I mean, how perverted is our foreign policy? That we uh, that somewhere along the line we say, you know, we are the problem. Uh huh. No question. We are the problem. Yahweh has a lot to say about that too. Oh boy, does he ever! And in reality, while it is Muslims pulling the trigger and killing Muslims. A uh, hundred to one over any outsider. I mean, she, she's like every Muslim. She wants to blame America for killing Muslims, and it's true. Well, America's killed a lot of Muslims. But the fact is, there have been a hundred Muslims killed, even in these last ten years, by fellow Muslims uh, for every one that America has killed. They kill each other a hundred to one over the rate that we kill them. And they're far more prone, because of the nature of Islam, because of Muhammad's example, to kill unarmed and innocent people than is America. America will not target deliberately the unarmed. Their collateral damage. But in the case of Muslims, they target the unarmed. That's who they prey upon. They get mad as us and then go blow up their own people. Exactly. To show us. So. Uh huh. Yeah. So. And we, but with our, with, with our weapons. With our weapons. We arm them and we created the environment for them to do this. And yet most people sit there and yawn and say, I think I'll vote for the Republican or the Democrat. <laughs>